Hello everybody, this is Milan with mageclass.com and in today's video we'll learn how would you go about changing functionality in Magento 2 in a proper way because that's something you do every single day as a Magento developer while customizing the platform for your clients. So the first important thing is you don't need to modify the original code in order to change its behavior. It's considered as a terrible idea actually because you won't be able to upgrade the system later and you create a big mess in your application where you don't even know what's original code and what was added, so you should always avoid that approach. Instead, similarly to Magento 1, Magento 2 allows you to change or extend the behavior of any original public method in the code base without even touching it, and that's exactly what we are going to explore in this lesson. So why don't we start by creating a new module? We've already seen how to do that in the previous lesson, Let's see how quickly we can do this again. So because we don't have the concept of code pools in Magento 2 anymore, we are just going to create a module right inside the app code folder. Mage class is the module vendor and the module itself will be called calculator. And I'm going to create etc folder and a file called module.xml. And this file is going to register our module. I have a snippet for that. Let me put the correct name. And we need to update app etc config.php to enable this module. So we'll say mage class underscore calculator should be one. Let's make sure the cache is cleared because we made a configuration change. All right, now we can create a model folder and inside of it basic.php file. This is the class that will be changing. It's very simple. You've seen this thousands of times. It has a namespace declared at the top and a simple function which divides two numbers and returns a result. I think it's better to keep it as basic as possible, at least at first, while we're focusing on other things. Now, in order to test this, I like to initialize Magento in a standalone script, because that way we don't need to worry about creating a route and a controller. So let me go ahead and create test.php file and insert a snippet that is simulating Magento environment. By the way, this is something you can find on our site. Under Magento 2 Pocket section, here's the link where Marius explained pretty well what's going on here. I'll switch back to my editor and let's test our calculator's basic class. We'll ask the object manager to instantiate basic class for us, so we'll say calculator equals, and then we'll say this object manager create, and then of course mage class calculator model basic. Now we can call our divide method, divide, with let's say 10 and 2 as an arguments. All right, let's run it. If we did everything correctly, we should expect 5 to appear on the screen. And yes, it's 5, so, so it's really easy. Now let's think of this class as something that we are not allowed to change directly, but we are asked to fix. For example, if we pass a 0 as a second argument, PHP will throw an exception because division by 0 is not possible. Or if there's anything else that this method should do, we need to find a way to extend it in a safe way. And that's definitely possible. Magento 2 introduced a new concept called plugins, which allow you to hook into a specific events that occur in any public method lifecycle. So any public method has before, around, and after events, or think of them as spots that we can hook into. For example, what if we want to add a specific bit of code when a product is saved to the database? Or what if in our example, we want to check if y parameter is zero before we allow PHP to execute the rest of the method? Or what if we want to add some behavior before and after an original method is called. This is all possible by default. The system provides these hooks out of the box. 
you don't need to dispatch these events manually like we did in Magento 1, for example. To demonstrate how powerful this is, I'm going to create di.xml file inside of etc folder and we'll create a node called config. Inside of that, we're going to create a node called type. And inside of that, we're going to create a node called plugin. Okay? Type has an attribute called name. This is the class which our plugin observes. Let's observe mage class calculator model basic class. Okay, now plugin has also three attributes. Name. This one identifies a plugin. This may be whatever name you like. I will call it mage class calculator colon colon before. Type which will correspond to our class that will hook into before event, so it's going to be image class, calculator, and then at the time of this recording, it's recommended to keep plugins in a plugin directory, and the class is going to be before. And the third argument is sort order, which determines the order in which plugins that call the same method are run. So, for example, if you have two before plugins that rewrite the same class, for example, this class, the sort order attribute will determine which one goes first. Okay, so I'm going to create our plugin directory and inside of it a file called before.php. I'll declare a namespace at the top, mage class calculator plugin, and then I'll declare a class before. So I'm going to literally say public function before divide and this method has access to all public methods of the original class through the first parameter. I'll call it calculator and what comes next are the original parameters of the divide method x and y. And just for the demonstration purposes we're going to echo hello from before plugin just for the example. If I delete far folder and refresh the page, yes, we are hooking into that before event and we are displaying information before the original method is called. What we can also do in before listener is to change the arguments that will be passed to the original method. So, for example, I can say here return an array of 5 and 10, for example. I'm returning an array of two elements because the original method receives two parameters. Remember that what we return in before divide is going to be passed to divide, and since it expects two inputs, we have to return two inputs as well. If I save this and switch back to Firefox, we can see a different output. Again, notice that if I pass only one argument, it's going to fail because the argument 2 is missing. If we see the exception log, it proves that the argument 2 was indeed missing. So before event can come in handy when we want to do something, maybe perform some checks before the original method and based on that maybe change values that are passed. This example is silly of course, but I'm pretty sure it has some better use case. Now let's see what after listener can do for us. We switch back to browser, we see the result alone without any message. So why don't we wait for divide method to return the result and then hook into that event to provide some friendly message, for example. Okay, so we're going to update the di.xml file. I'm going to copy this line and replace before with after here and of course here. And I'm going to create another class, save it as after.php and why don't we just copy everything from before to do this as quickly as possible. Alright, class name should be after and the function is, as you might expect, after divide. Okay, now it has a slightly different declaration. It receives the calculator object but the second argument will be the output of the divide method, so whatever divide returns is going to be passed here, so let's call it result. And we can just append 
the result is and then whatever the result is okay let's save this clear the cache and try in the browser Hello from before plugin and we got the whole result message which was added in after plugin. Very cool. Now let's explore the last event called around. It's probably the most useful event because you can change both the arguments and returned values of an original method and also add some behavior before and after an original method is called. Basically you have the full control on the execution flow of the original method. Let's demonstrate how powerful it is for fixing that division by zero exception which we mentioned earlier. Okay, we'll start off by commenting out before and after plugins in di.xml and let's have only around this time. So I'll copy this and update plugin name and type. Okay, now let's create a file around.php and copy everything from after.php file. Class name is around this time, and I bet you know the method is around divide. Now, this method receives many arguments, same as with before and after, it receives the calculator object. Next is the original divide method itself. And what comes after are the arguments of the divide method x and y. So now, because we have everything here, we can first check if the invalid argument is passed. We can throw an exception here, but I'm not going to do that. I'll simply return unable to divide by zero. Otherwise, we can safely call divide method we can pass either real values or some other values if we needed to, based on our business logic. I will pass original values, and we can also decide whether or not this method should return something. We could leave like this, or we can save to a result variable and return it. Or we can add the same thing as we did in other plugin, so something like return, the result is result. So you see how many options you have here, and that's why I guess the around method is the best choice when you want to make some bigger modifications to the original method. Let's clear the cache and test this out. I want to test both cases. Let's check with non-zero y. Yes, the result is fine, and let's switch back to test.php to change second argument to zero. Okay, let's test this out. Sure enough, we got unable to divide by zero. And I think that's pretty much it when it comes to plugin usage in Magento 2. I recommend you to visit Magento DevDocs and review Magento plugin section. Now, to close this lesson, I'd like to show you a different approach of overriding existing functionality, which is a bit more familiar to Magento 1 developers because it allows you to tell the object manager through the XML configuration that whenever it's asked to instantiate a specific class, it should actually instantiate some other class. So it's not event-based like plugins, we're talking about very familiar rewriting system, so let's quickly see how would we go about setting it up. I'll switch back to di.xml and I'm going to comment out whole plugin section here. And I'll create a new node called Preference. So here we told Magento that anytime someone asks the object manager to instantiate a Mage class calculator model basic, it should actually instantiate Mage class calculator model advanced. Let me quickly create this class. I'll save as advanced.php in models folder this time. And I'm going to copy everything from basic here. The class is advanced, and I'm just going to put rewritten here. Okay, cache cleared. I'll try in the browser, and it seems to be working. Generally, this can be very useful in situations when you want to rewrite a non-public method, 
because plugins can work with public methods, you won't be able to slot some functionality before, around or after a protected or private method, keep that in mind. However, preferences in Magento have a specific role and that is to encourage developers to use interfaces and service contracts design. This is a completely different topic, but just as an intro, if we open etc slash di.xml file, which comes by default with Magento installation, we can see interfaces everywhere on the left side, and this on the right represents the concrete class that will be used when an interface on the left is required. So whenever you see PSR log logger interface declared as a dependency in a class constructor, Magento Object Manager will instantiate Magento Framework Logger Monolog. Unless this configuration is not changed by some other module in the system, which is also possible. We'll cover preferences in detail in the next video. For now, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction on how to use them for class rewriting. Okay, so to recap, when you want to update public methods, create a plugin. Otherwise, I guess preferences are the only option. With that said, I think that's it for this lesson. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.